this video goes with the slug trail game um, um, from section 2 so the children have decomposed the key elements of the game and you've got those listed down and you're starting to actually make it so the first thing you really need to do is actually draw the sprite um, in fact before that we need to right mouse click and delete the cat and then we're into actually drawing the sprite so we use this um, star shaped uh, button with the paintbrush sign and we click on paint the sprite this brings us up a painting editor it's very important at this point to point out that children must draw the sprite facing to the right and it's worth actually pointing out this little white dot at the top which I'm just pointed to with the cursor and the blue line that comes out of it because that's the direction of travel so let's just click it into the ellipse tool and let's choose a body and let's just drag that out and in fact if we go and use the line tool as well we can add some very simple antennae and as it's me I quite like putting a few little blobby eyes on there as well sorry I'm sure they're not really eyes are they <laughs> those are a bit square <laughs> that's because they're the line tool <laughs> never mind that'll do so we click on OK and we've got our slug there great idea to just rename it as well okay good practice just to rename your sprites to what they actually are okay now at this point what we're going to do is go back to that decompose planner and just say well you know let's have a look at some of the things we wanted it to do and moving was one of those things so of course you could ask the children how we've done movement before and things like the smoking car well that's fine but we don't want to keep having to press on the key all the time we want to we saw when it was decomposing the game earlier that the slug travels all of the time okay so you might want to just drag out some of these blocks but not actually snap them together in any uh, thing and just say to the children that actually one of the things we can do is use a forever loop because anything we put in a forever loop goes on over and over and over and over again drag the blocks out see if they can work out how to snap them together and just tell them that when they do snap them together the slug will rush across the screen and they'll have to drag it back again then it'll rush across again okay if it just moves a little bit and stops then they haven't got it in the right position they'll spend a bit of time and they'll work that out themselves and they'll come up with something very similar to this where we're just dragging these in and you can see now the move 10 steps is inside the forever loop and when we click the green flag you see it rushes across and rushes across again okay it's a really good idea at this point to ask the children to see if they can get their slug to go a little bit slower but say they mustn't add any more blocks to these blocks so it might be something like just changing the number inside there uh, you could also add an extension can they make it go backwards which is minus one instead and now we've got a much more sedate slug now I would really encourage you just like I say on the planning to actually model this by walking around and doing one step movement and move one step move one step move one step tend to bump into something and but keep going and okay, keep you trying to move just like the slug does on the screen and that's great and then we wanted though of course and go back to your decompose planner and have a look at that and another thing they wanted to do was get it to point towards or follow the mouse pointer so if we go towards this point towards and drop this down we get point towards the mouse pointer and can they can they put that in a place where the uh, it will constantly move one step and then point towards the mouse pointer and move one step and point towards the mouse pointer and move one step and point towards the mouse pointer and the children will go and discover quite easily that actually that's the best place for it and now when you click on this it's moving one step and pointing towards the mouse pointer moving one step and pointing towards the mouse pointer over and over and over again I would really encourage you as it says on the on, in the book to actually just model that as well get another child up to be the mouse pointer and move one step and point towards the other child and move one step and point towards the other child the mouse pointer okay um, and that's quite fun to do just to just to get the children um, thinking that through right 
now let's have a look at some of the things like um, putting in some pen trail which you, it could be uh, one of the other things that they've come up with as well and you might want to just ask them well can you remember what block did we use to actually draw lines and some of the children might remember back to the smoking car and okay, can be able to remember that um, if they're really not sure or you've given them a bit of time to think about that you might want to just give them a hint and just drag out a block but actually a lot of the children remember that pen down block um, allow them to choose wherever they want to put it first of all and often you'll find that they'll put it inside the loop Okay, and you can see it's drawing that. But you, you, when you model this, you might say, well, do I need to say pen down, move one step, point towards the mountain, pen down, move one step? Do I need to say pen down all the time? Is that the most efficient use of the code? Okay, running that pen down over and over again. And some of the children will say, and you might say, well, actually, you know, could we put it somewhere that it only gets run once? And if they start thinking about it, they'll realize that that's a pretty good place. Although it just as sensible would be to actually have it in a, its own little block too. And that's, you know, there's always more than one way to do everything. <laughs> okay. So they've got the pen down, but of course you've got all these lines drawing and you just want to get rid of them. And often the children will come up themselves. Oh, okay. Can we wipe the lines out? Well, what? what pen command could you do to actually wipe the lines out and the children will often find something like the clear command they might put it in the forever loop and realize that you never get any lines at all but they'll come up with something along those lines um, it's really nice at this time once they they're really enjoying playing with this to really give them a bit of exploration time okay can, can they draw multicolored lines can they make a separate block of code which which actually um, draws some multicolored lines uh, and they can use things like the sort of solutions they did for the smoking car or they can use a forever loop uh, and um, setting the pen color um, some of them will try changing the size of the pen color or sorry the size of the pen line and they really experiment with a lot of those those things inside the forever loop one of the things you can sometimes have is this change pen size by and of course if you put this inside the loop watch what happens okay this is a very common error can you see how quickly our um, pen is growing and soon it will grow so big that you won't actually be able to see anything okay now there's a really simple fix for this obviously you need to stop Remove the change pen size by one <laughs> okay and you just want to put your set pen size back to whatever size you want it to be okay and put that somewhere where it's going to be run once and there we go we're back to whatever size we want it to be okay um, and that's that's quite fun but I would certainly give children quite a bit of experimentation time um, with this I think that works really well then we get on to actually making some roads so let's get into a stage here and we're going to go to backgrounds and we're going to go to edit and we're going to go to the paintbrush and the large paintbrush size and we're just going to draw a road it's a good idea just to make sure you don't draw the road the, or the background the same colors as any of the colors that you've done the the um, uh, slug in the first place so i'm going to have a sort of a light gray road for this boring color I suspect and uh, just drag that round and I'm then going to use the fill tool and pop that in as well and there we go we've got that in there of course children can make as many different backgrounds as they like but they do need to make sure that the background color is exactly the same each time so if I was copying this and editing and making a second one okay I might even um, use the uh, just the clear go and choose that same in fact I may even use the eyedropper tool and go and choose that color and just make sure it's exactly the same color for that background as well there we go let's just pop that in there okay um, it's not a bad idea to actually try and remember which square down you you chose and I might of course have a totally different color for the actual line this time if I wanted to Okay, so let's, uh, or maybe even a thinner line, actually, let's not go for a thinner line. Same thickness of line, there's, there's good reason for that. <laughs> okay, 
So now we've got multiple um, multiple backgrounds as well. And then you could challenge the, your pupils. Could they make a line, uh, a button that, or find a way to actually change that background, program it so that someone can actually change it as well, which is also part of the decompose um, um, project. So let's now go and have a look. We're, we're rushing through this just because of um, helping you out. And let's have a little look at um, actually adding in that sound effect. Um, and I don't know whether you'll really be able to see the sound of it, hear the sound effect when we play this because I haven't got the speakers on. But um, now this is where we go back to that selection blocks that we were using previously. And in the maths quiz, we used if else. And here we're just using a simple if block. And in fact, we're going to go into sound. We're going to import a sound. And in electronic, there's a horrible sound called <coughs> which I think you can actually slightly hear there, but um, probably not whether that will play. It's a horrible sound, trust me. And now we can go back in there and we can use the sound blocks. We don't want to use the play sound screech until done, otherwise it will stop everything. Okay, and we drag this down. And then in the sensing, we want this touching color one. So if it's touching the color, and what we're going to do is click on the touching color and click on the actual color itself. Now, if we drag our slug, Okay, and pop him right in there. And if I left click this at this point, you you would hear no sound at all. It is running the block of code, but it's not touching the color yellow, so it's not playing that sound screech. If I drag it across and put it on here and left click on it, if you'd hear the sound, you'd hear it actually playing that sound, that horrible screeching sound. And then you can ask the children, well, where can we put this block so that it gets checked over and over and over and over and over and over and over and, over and, and eventually they'll tell you the forever loop. And then of course what you've got is it's not only going to work, but if it goes outside the line it's going to make that horrible screeching sound. And trust me, that horrible screeching sound, <laughs> it's awful. Um, now there's a really nice way to... To, to just test to see whether they really understand what's what's going on here okay and that involves uh, a little a little extension here which is to um, to drag out and say well how, how about could we actually get it so that the the um, the slug says one thing if he's in the line and something else if he's outside the line and actually it's quite a nice one to give with no hints to start with and then just introduce some hints if you feel your children need that maybe by dragging out the if or else and then dragging out one of these touching color ones okay I love this sort of gradual hint process it's quite nice to see um, children sort of thinking it through oh, and, and at what stage they work it out okay and we can type in something like few if you're in the line and oh no if you're outside the line okay and just leave that and see if they can work out um, where it would go and of course what you would have is if, if it's touching the color and oh no and that, of course, also can be popped inside the forever loop. Common mistakes, sometimes the children will drag this in and they'll end up putting inside that. So it's, in this case, if it's touching the color yellow, it will play the sound screech. And then it'll, it'll only check this second block if the first block has been tested. So that doesn't really work there as we want it to. Okay, it can be dragged out there. Um, there are lots of other things you can do, but actually the selection investigation is the best place for those. Um, and, and there are lots and lots, and that's where the children really get to use this understanding and this idea, okay, um, independently.